Hi, I'm Chris Wan, Deep Tech Investor at Bessemer Venture Partners. Today, I'm in Devons, Massachusetts to explore a field of innovation that's going to impact the next generation's access to clean energy and help build a more sustainable future, fusion technology. Simply put, fusion emulates the power mechanism of the sun. More specifically, the incredible gravity and temperature of the sun squeeze hydrogen nuclei together until they fuse, creating heavier nuclei, destroying mass, and releasing immense amounts of energy. In order to commercialize fusion technology, scientists and engineers need to create the conditions for nuclei to fuse in a way that produces net energy gain. These conditions, also known as the Lawson criteria, depend on three things. Temperature, typically north of 100 million degrees Celsius, high nuclei density, to maximize the probability of nuclei collisions, and enough time for the nuclei to collide and fuse. If and when startups commercialize fusion technology, the impact will be enormous. Theoretically, one glass of water will be able to power one person's energy needs for their entire life. Based on the promise of efficient, clean energy creation, scientists have spent the last six decades studying fusion technology with the goal of one day using fusion to power the world. Today, I'm getting to know Commonwealth Fusion Systems. I'm sitting down with both Bob Mumgard, CEO, and Darby Dunn, VP of Operations. They're going to tell me what sparked the creation of Commonwealth Fusion Systems and how they believe fusion technology will change the world. Bob, can you tell me about the origin story behind uh, Commonwealth Fusion Systems and how things got started? So Commonwealth Fusion Systems started at MIT we were working on a Department of Energy experiment for a long time as fusion was advancing. And we could see that it was getting to the point where you were gonna have a fusion industry. And the question was, what was the best way to accelerate that? And through a combination of technology and an organization, we came up with what became Commonwealth Fusion Systems Technology Plan, but also the idea of a, a company really dedicated to advancing fusion energy at the speed that's required for climate change. So about five years ago, it spun out, just a couple people, and now it's about 500 people. That's really impressive growth over the past five years. Looking forward to the next five, 10 years, how long do you think things will take before Commonwealth or the world is able to commercialize uh, fusion technology? When you think about tough tech, and you think about how fast it can go, uh, there's wide, wide range of opinions. It basically, go as fast as you can build things. And so what we're showing here in Devons is we're showing that you can build a net energy fusion machine, a machine called Spark, in just a matter of a few years. And that machine is you know, only about two years into construction and it's about two years left to go. And at that point, we'll know that we have the ability to make commercially relevant industrial scale fusion energy, which could put commercialization of fusion energy in the early part of the 30s, which I think is significantly faster than what we thought was possible before, but also the right time scale for the climate and for energy access. What is one thing that you wish the world knew about fusion technology that they don't already? Yeah, I wish the world knew that it's safe and that it's coming very soon. So we're taking two different types of hydrogen, fusing them together to make helium, you know, the byproduct is steam, so it is something that is safe and that we can deploy all over the world and give people the clean, breathable air that they need. Fusion is the most energy dense reaction in the solar system, right? It's a type of energy that powers all of our stars, including our sun. We don't talk about when is the sun gonna run out of energy, right? It has essentially unlimited energy for our lifetime. So it's similar for fusion here on Earth. One of the big important pieces to that technologically is these high temperature superconductors that you all created in the lab. Can you tell us about the significance of these high temperature superconductors in, in fusion technology? Like many things, the breakthrough is a long time in the making. So what we have here is we have a material science innovation that happened all the way back in the 80s and actually won the Nobel Prize. But it took time to turn it into an actual product and it took time for that product to be used for an application. In our case, we're the first major users of this material. So we've taken a raw material and we've turned it into magnets. And these magnets are double the magnetic field of what magnets existed before. And that allows us to build better magnetic bottles, which are the basis of these fusion machines. And in these fusion machines, called tokamaks, the magnetic field determines its overall performance. The power out you get for a given machine goes like the magnetic field to the fourth power. 
So that means if you double the magnetic field, you're talking about an order of magnitude change in the you know, economics and the performance of that machine. We've also made that shift from you know, small, small scale magnets getting built in the lab to now magnets are actually going into Spark. We went from you know, roughly the magnets the size of a dinner plate, and then we did our, our big demonstration magnet in the late summer 2021. Uh, so that was you know, getting to maybe at the size of a very large pool table. Now we're getting to magnets that are you know, even like 15 feet tall. Now, pay me a future of the 2030s. Commonwealth, you've developed your first commercial system. It's now being deployed. What does this mean for society and why does this matter? So we think about energy today and we think about it as a trade-off. Should I use this energy now or preserve it for future generations? And fusion changes that trade-off completely. To have the knowledge that on Earth, we as a civilization have an energy source that is unlimited and that can be put anywhere and that can be turned on at any time and that can last longer than the solar system. Now that is a shift in how we think about energy. And so we think that, that even just cognitively knowing that that's a possibility will have ramifications in how people think about applications that use more energy. Yeah, and if you think about this in the broader terms of getting to net zero by 2050, uh, most of the technology that you need to actually eliminate those emissions requires electricity. So if we can provide that with fusion, you're providing clean energy as the source, as Bob mentioned, for that, you know, that other types of deep technology to actually get us to net zero by 2050.